On this week's episode, I talk about finished objects, um, some new items coming to the shop, and uh, what I'm currently working on. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Tiffany, and I'm the dyer and maker behind Lita Valley Fiber Co. You can find me online. Uh, Instagram is at Lita Valley Fiber Co. My shop is latavalleyfiberco.etsy.com. And you can direct message me, lvfiberco at gmail.com. I wanted to say hello to my mom. Hi, mom. And also to the new subscribers uh, that have joined this week. Hello. Um, leave a comment down below and say hi and maybe what you're working on. That would be fun to talk about. So, um, yeah. This week has been busy with dyeing. I have two batches of things to show you. Um, I dyed tweed yarn and then some DK yarn. And they're not all the same colors, they have some variety. Um, but let's get started. So this week I dyed um, the rest of the super, no, sport weight uh, tweed. I have the blue, the red, and the gray. And in last week's episode, I showed the first one, which was a beige color. So I was able to finish up. Um, I think I had talked about the color saturation of the beige. It was supposed to be dark brown and uh, I, I couldn't get it. So I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to get any other colors. And yet here you see, I have um, beautiful blue, a nice red, and then this gray. So I'm, I'm not sure why it didn't like the, let's see, I dyed the beige, which I was hoping for dark brown, um, I think, in Kutch. And so I don't know if it just didn't like, um, <laughs> I don't know why, why it didn't like the yarn. I thought it was maybe the silk, and I do need to make a clarification. Last week, I kept calling it tensile silk. It's not tensile silk. <laughs> My husband was kind enough to say, I think you mean Tussa silk. So it's T-U-S-S-A-H, Tussa silk. And that's what this has in it. It has the alpaca, 30, 35% alpaca, 35% merino and then 15% tussa silk and 15% donegal that's the tweed tweedy bits so it was interesting this process i don't know if you can see i'll post some pictures maybe that would be a little bit easier for you to see the the blue did not adhere to the tweedy bits so you can kind of see that there's more variation you've got the um, black tweed and then the cream tweed um, and some gray tweed so it didn't saturate the tweed which was nice now that didn't happen in the red the red turned the cream tweeds uh, pink actually and then of course it didn't go with the black but the brown seems to be a little bit different as well and then with the gray, the gray completely covered the lighter tweed. <laughs> so you can't even see it in there. But you can make out like the dark black, which I like a lot. So these will be coming to the shop um, today. So look for them there if, you'd, if you're interested. Um, so the last bit of the shop that I have to show you is that I dyed... Uh, some DK yarn and I finished that up this week actually yesterday it's been drying well let's see yesterday was Wednesday so yeah I finished up um, so these are the DK that I'm bringing to the shop today aren't these colors beautiful I was really happy with these 
Um, let's start with the blue. This is um, my same recipe that I use um, for almost all the blues. So this one is similar to Post. In fact, it is Post. It's just on a different base. So if you like Post, which I think is currently on um, two bases. So this will be the third base. Um, yeah, it's got some variation in it. And this won't pick that up, but I'll post some pictures here. It has some really light blue and um, and then some darker stripes of blue. So it's very pretty. I like that one a lot. And then this is a yellow and pink. Um, and again, you're not going to be able to see the, the variation in here because of the lighting. But there's pink strips that go down and that was interesting because um it wasn't supposed to do that it was supposed to be all yellow um a nice uh what kind of yellow would you call that kind of a burnt yellow maybe i don't know i was going for a more um saturated yellow kind of on the verge of golden um so but that's okay i you know i didn't actually have a recipe for that one so i was just experimenting so there you go it's it's yellow and pink and then this purple is from lac and um, I love how deep and saturated it is. It's very beautiful. In fact, um, some color work would be nice with all of these. And then if you wanna throw in some of this, I mean, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? That would be good together too. Uh, so this one is, it's interesting and I love the process. Um, this was dyed with tannin which is a light, it dyes the yarn a light beige. And then I put it in a iron bath, hot. You know, I, I mixed up the iron and put it in my um, tub. And then I poured the, um, the yarn into the tub and it instantly starts changing into various grays. Now I wanted a dark gray, almost black. Um, so I let this sit in the iron for an hour, that iron bath, and I went to check on it and pulled it out and it was perfect. So I, fi I finally have my dark color. Um, almost black, in, in fact, um, it's, it's pretty spot on. It's pretty dark. So um, this recipe I will be keeping in the shop. Um, for future um, bases as well. So, okay, that's my DK coming to the shop today. Um, so, that's it for shop news. And um, just a reminder that the update is live, um, well, this afternoon sometime. <laughs> So as soon as I get done recording. Um, so let's move on to finished objects. Okay, this week I finished um, a couple hats and then a headband. I'll do the headband first. This is out of my hand dyed yarn. It's called uh, Selkirk Sunset and it is in my DK base. Now I had knit a hat for somebody and I had just a smidgen of yarn left over. So I thought I'll make I'll make a headband or a ear warmer. <laughs> there you go. So it's pretty warm, um, but it's nice to sometimes have the, the space on the top if you want to wear a ponytail or something like that um, or a bun. I do a lot of buns because I have um, a lot of hair. And so I'll put it on top of my head. And so sometimes it's nice to have just ear warmer. Um, so yeah, 
That was easy. And it's just in a rib, um, a rib stitch. So I think it's one by one. Yeah, one by one. And I just, uh, I cast on, I don't even remember how many stitches. And then I knit until I got to the end of my ball, uh, which wasn't very much. And then I just bound off. So I was hoping that it would be thick enough this way and it turned out. So <laughs> that's always nice. Yarn chicken doesn't always turn out that way. In fact, sometimes it turns out very much short. <laughs> so, okay, here's the first hat. And this one is knit out of the Malabrigo um, no, no van. Hmm. Hold on. <laughs> um, Noventa. And this is Anniversario. So maybe Anniversary? I don't know. Um, but that's this colorway. I cast on uh, 54 stitches and um, did a two by two rib down here and then I just knit and when I decreased I just uh, actually decreasing when you have um, stockinette stitch is really easy so I just divided out my stitches and then decreased um, I think I just knit two together actually. So it has a nice top to it. And this hat is a bit slouchy, which is nice. I have been doing beanie. So this slouchy um, is nice to have too. So yeah. And I really liked this color. Uh, my son Hudson says, oh, it's like the rainbow, Mom. And yeah, I'm pretty sure every color of the rainbow is in there. So this will be coming to the shop uh, today as well. And then my last hat is... Um, I lost the tag. <laughs> it's here somewhere. But it's also that um, Noventa, the Malabrigo Noventa. And this one I cast on 56 stitches and two by two ribbing. Um, it, so with this one, I didn't follow a pattern. I just figured out, I think it said, um, I just read the directions on the, here. Um, 11 stitches, 11 to 9 stitches, depending on your needle, um, will give you 4 inches. And so then I just multiplied that out to an adult size hat. Um, yeah, and I actually, I didn't have, it says size uh, US 13 to 17 needle. Well, I had a 12, so that's what I went with. Um, so, and it seemed to turn out just fine. And I, I used every last bit. Um, so on this one too, I didn't use a pattern. I just did a seed stitch, which is, okay, so I did the two by two rib and then I knit maybe two rounds and then I went right into the seed stitch pattern. Um, and so a seed stitch is knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And then when you come to the next row, you do the opposite of the one right below it. So if you purled, then you would knit into that. And if you knit, then you would purl into that. So um, no pattern, I just <laughs> went with it. And this is more beanie style. So it, it's there's no extra fabric. In fact, I did play yarn chicken with this one <laughs> because I ran out of yarn and I had to bind off um, sooner than I thought. But it's it's big enough for an adult. So, um, and the top decrease is beautiful too. So, um, yeah, it's very nice. These are all warm hats. I, um, it's, yeah. And it's been fun kind of changing up the pattern to do something a little bit different. Um, so I'm not as bored. 
which is nice because I've been knitting a lot of hats for the market that's coming up next week, next Saturday. So, yep, so at this rate, I'm getting two hats done. Well, I dyed a lot this week. So I'm getting, the last two weeks, I've gotten two hats done per week. And I have still a bit of yarn left to do. So maybe this week I'll be able to get, because I'm not dying, I'll be able to get some more hats done as well. So uh, that's it for finished objects. What do you think? Lots of hats. <laughs> I am not bored yet with hats. Um, I actually like it because you pretty much in a day can have start to finish a hat, a project done, which is nice because then I have something to show you all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's kind of handy. Um, there are some things that I would like to knit that would take longer. Um, but I just haven't put that into my schedule at this point. So maybe not next week. <laughs> next week is uh, I'm gearing up for the market. So yeah, maybe the second week of May, <laughs> I'll get on those other projects. Well, I even have a languishing um, vest that I started I think I started that in January, February, somewhere in there. And I haven't done anything on it. It's the same size. So it would be good to maybe get some progression. Obviously not for this um, season. It'll be for next fall and winter. So um, I have some time to get it done, <laughs> which is good. Okay, let's move on to what I'm working on. I think I mentioned in the last episode that I have a knit night that I go to um, once a week. And so this week I worked on a pair of socks out of my hand dyed yarn. And I had cast on, um, it's been a couple months ago, and I just had the toe so I was able to um, knit on it here and there um, this past week, and um, and then I went to knit night and I did the ribbing and cast off. Well, I thought I had, this is a very itty bitty sock. I was wanting to do just an ankle sock and um, <laughs> And so I think I accomplished that. It's, it's, this will be right around my ankle. Um, but I, I miscalculated when to begin the heel. <laughs> and a total newbie mistake. Um, I had measured and then I calculated, okay, I need two inches for the heel. So for my, for the total amount that I need. So this is seven and a half inches. And um, yeah, that, that's not gonna work. And then as I bound off, I did a, my um, stretch, a stretchy bind off, but I couldn't get it over my foot. So, <laughs> was doing I don't know what I was doing but I'm I am going to rip out um, all the way uh, to the heel um, right about here and then I will add let's see if this is seven and a half inches then um, yeah I started way too soon on the heel. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I was working on at Knit, knit Night. And um, I'm going to pull it out. This is the yarn I was using. It's the yarn that I dyed in a cake um, to get a gradient. And I don't know, it's, 
it's more of a marled look. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe because it's on such a small circumference, um, it looks more marled. I guess it is darker down here and lighter as you go up, um, if you look at it. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Wasn't quite what I was expecting. So, I do have a pair of socks I'm working on, and I'll continue working on those. Um, I went ahead and uh, caked up all of the hat yarn that I had bought previously, uh, so I am ready to go. And I thought, hey, maybe y'all could vote on which two hats I would do this week. So, if you like any of these, one, two, or three, let me know. And then four, five, and six. So, I hope you can see all the lovely colors. These are kind of bluish purple. Um, definitely pink. It's very pink. So, yeah. So I will cast on. Um, you guys vote and put it in the comments below. And then I will cast on another hat. Well, two hats. I, I should be able to get two. If there's a tie on one of these that you've all picked, um, I could, I would probably be able to knit it um, this week. So, on top of prepping for the market. Okay, so post in the comments which ones you would like to see. Um, I am going to do a vlog next Thursday on schedule. Um, so, yes, vote this weekend um, and I'll cast on Monday for the two hats. Possibly three. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how involved you guys are in helping me decide which color to cast on next. Um, and you've seen that, you know, red and multi-color. So, yeah. Lots of options. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. So, that's it for casting on. I'm not going to... I'll work on the socks here and there. Um, probably this weekend. Cast on the other sock and finish it, hopefully. Um, and then... Let's see, uh, be able to cast on these hats for Monday. So that seems reasonable for me. I will probably spend Friday next week prepping um, all the rest of the things for the market. So, okay, last thing I wanted to talk about for cast ons was my husband has been working on um, cotton dishcloths and this is the um, dishcloth recipe you're not gonna be able to see this it's too bright I bounced between the dishcloth recipe and grandma's dishcloth which I think they're very similar there's there's a couple things that they do differently and both of them have a yarn over um, increase on the edge, which I have always taken out. I just like to do um, the straight, you know, the, so the yarn over would be right along this edge. I think there's like a stitch or two and then a yarn over. So there's a, there's a gap there. And I've always just, I didn't really prefer that, so I wanted it a nice clean edge. So he is on the decreases and almost done, I would say. So he has really taken to making dishcloths. He's made several. He made um, a couple for my mom for her birthday last month. So um, yeah, he really likes it. And right now I only have, I could have him working on hats, but um, 
I only have the one needle set that's that big. I mean, do you want to see the needle? They're huge. So for the hats, oh no, I thought these were 12s. They're not, they're 11s. So they're pretty big when you're talking about, you know, bulky. Actually, I think that's super bulky yarn um, compared to, you know, these, which are sixes. So 11 and size six. Anyway, I only have one set of these, so we can't both be working on hats. So he's working on dishcloths, which is great. I think he might want to sell them at the market too, so um, we'll see how. He, he can do about one a week because, you know, he has a full-time job and he gets to it on the evening times we sit and chat about our day and we knit. So um, he knits on the dishcloth and I knit on whatever I'm, I've been working on. So, um, yeah. Okay, I think that's it for uh, works in progress. And I don't have anything else. So it's going to be a short one today, um, but I hope you had fun and do make comments down below with what you're working on or um, what you would like to work on, dream knitting. I'm all about the conversation and I enjoy the people that have left comments um, down below the videos. So um, it's fun to interact and uh, with you guys. So continue and we can all have fun. <laughs> Okay, that's it for this week. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next week.